Hi, me. this is uh, Sami Issa, CEO and co-founder of Web3 Cloud. And I'm panicked about the holidays and uh, all the upcoming activities. The K nut, the <laughs> Newt, Newt Rock me. me. I will respond to pretty much every version of my name. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Yourself? I am uh, worn out. There is a panic in crypto. You know, when we started Panic with Friends, if that's still the name, it still the, is. Uh, there was a panic in the stock market. Yes. I don't think people cared about crypto. Um, there was a crypto bear market, I think, going on. Mm -hmm. um, so people were just panicked about everything else. And here we are in uh, late 2022. And it's a complete meltdown in crypto. Stock market is weak and teetering, but it is the crypto market, and I still will call it crypto. I'm leaning into the word crypto because that's what people in the industry, want, you know, are leaning into the word crypto. I just call it more internet. But anyways, there is a panic. Yep. This is not like 2000, March 2020. I have no idea what to make of it because of the recent fraud uncovered at FTX, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, you and I. But I still don't fully understand crypto. I understand machines. I understand the idea of decentralization, the idea of it. We haven't seen it in a great way. I understand the idea of a risk, as we're seeing uh, people learn quickly around crypto. But um, I just need to, like a gut check, I'm, I'm lost. And, you know, the people that I follow in this space you know, don't have the answers, and there's just a cascading problem going. Have you followed this at all? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But it just seemed like it was ready for a reset. And we're having a pretty serious one right now, and not too long it'll be working its way back up again. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. Look at you. <laughs> I mean, you need a disclaimer on Canute, on the neuter. So I'm, I'm shaken, Canute. So I've spent the last weeks backtracking through my own mistakes here. We had Sam... Uh, fraud Sam on on the podcast. Sam Bankman Fried, yeah. Yeah, we had him on the podcast. I've listened to it again. Pete's listened to it again. I don't think you have, but I listened to it again just looking for for anything. And this is like I think eighteen months ago. Yep. So he wasn't quite famous. It was definitely popping up in my thing, but he wasn't quite at the fame that uh, he had a couple months ago, and now infamy. So I um, am stressed because I. I know the people involved, uh, not well, but I, I've met Sam. Uh, I know a lot of people on the team that have, have since resigned. Uh, I've talked strategy with Cena. We love Cena. We had him on yeah. the, we, we, I, he hasn't been able to come out of his bunker. He, he resigned, but I can't bug him. You know, he's, he's yeah. dealing with stuff that's bigger than I can. That's, you know, I was just kind of a distant friend uh, in that we had a business relationship and we talked strategy. We had him on the podcast, but, you know, he wasn't involved in the day-to-day -day no. of this business. So I, I don't have answers. Um, I'm completely perplexed. I will say I'm grateful that the mistakes that I made have just affected mostly me, me yeah. my own personal. I, I didn't, uh, you know, my job as a day job is to manage LP money, and I make plenty of mistakes doing that. But um, as luck would have it, most of my exposure to this is personal, if at all. So, uh, you know, my investment in multi-coin, you know, I've long not understood owning these, these, these tokens, and I definitely don't own crypto myself, um, other than a little bit in, in Coinbase, a really insignificant amount, because I don't understand the um, storage of it and the passwords and everything. So I, I need to make sense of this, because I am super, super bullish on the feature or whatever we're going to call it, this layer uh, of Web3 and crypto, because they're, they're solving some real problems for people like me. And right. so I will repeat, like when I started StockTotes, I wish I knew what I knew now. I wish my investors, and it's not fully their job, and it's easy for me in hindsight, said, Howard, you know, when you build a Web2 company, it's going to be an ad-based business. You're going to, have to spam up the yin-yang. You're going to um, have to hire a ton of engineers, and um, good luck. So...
it, Web3, for me, if I was starting stock trades today, I think about everything as I would start. And Web3, for me, solves a lot of different things that I wouldn't have to do in a Web2 world, which is offloading a lot of engineering to the blockchain and the community and figuring out a business model for my business much sooner because that era of Web2 is pretty much behind us now. And why I say it's behind us is Apple's crushed Facebook in many ways and, and clogged the pipes up for, for people to grow, small businesses to grow. And we have 5% interest rates. So in that world, where does crypto fit in? I am super bullish uh, in terms of now finally playing with this. You know, I'm trying all these different products around NFTs and communities, but um, I haven't really plunged hard with my own money. So, so that's important to me. You know, you as a ad guy and a, and a marketing guy and an artist, um, it's it's interesting, but it's still fringe. Right. And so we have this giant reset, I think, that you called. But beyond this reset, we had this reset in the Internet in 99, 2000, and it lasted four years. And from that came Web 2. And now we have a complete reset. It could be interest rates. It could be deglobalization, all the things we've talked about with guests. But it's also now, what's the platform? Like, how does the Internet get to the next level beyond the Apples, the Googles, the Amazons, the Microsofts, the gatekeepers? And so I think a few weeks ago we had Sammy on from Web3 Cloud. So I called Sammy. I said, listen, Sammy, a lot of things have changed since we recently chatted. It's unbelievable, the, you know, the panic that's ensued. So I want to have Sammy on just to talk about what the world looks like post FTX fraud, post the centralized breakdown of exchanges, um, and talk about you know what the future could look like because infrastructure, which is where you know Sammy and the team are focused on, still has to happen. If if the next set of winners and entrepreneurs can build on this, we need infrastructure. So I think that's a segue. I have a different set of questions and discussions for Sammy, who's just been in the hardware side of this and in the machine side of this and the infrastructure side of uh, computers for a very long time. So I think it's a, it's a good time to not just talk about Web3 cloud the company, but like, what do we see going ahead for people that are still interested in this? Are you okay with that? That sounds great. First, I'm going to play this disclaimer. Social Leverage Acquisition Corp, Slack, which is a company, as you know, I'm CEO of, has announced a proposed merger with Web3 Cloud. And as I said, I'm CEO of Slack. And Social Leverage Fund 4, one of our funds, our latest funds, where I'm a GP, is a shareholder, a member of the sponsor group. That doesn't mean we can't talk about it, but in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, listeners should be aware that I have a direct and indirect economic interest in Slack and its proposed merger with Web3 Cloud. Slack has filed a preliminary proxy with the SEC relating to its proposed merger with Web3 Cloud that contains important information about the transaction and these and other potential conflicts of interest. This document is publicly available at www.sec.gov. So let's get uh, Sammy on the horn. Sammy! Hello, hello. You're following a disclaimer. We rarely we have disclaimers at the beginning and the end, but this is like a real disclaimer because we're friends and we're doing business together. And but I need your help. I'm here for you, my friend. It feels like we've talked like a decade ago. Uh, uh, an hour is a decade in, in the <laughs> Web three, and maybe one day an hour will just be an hour. But um, a lot to digest here in in late 2022. And the first thing is. You know, I've been I've been pretty tough on myself, as I should be, because it's hard to spot fraud, especially when it's not my job. If it's my own money, yes, it's my job to spot fraud. But I think part of my reliance on the system, and this is on me, is that people with more money than me should do more work. And it's a r reminder again, because it's been a while since Bernie made up, that people that put in more money after you don't necessarily do the work. So in, in that world where I got to take responsibility for my own mistakes and it's my own money. Where does regulation now fit into the crypto equation in your opinion? Well, I mean, look, we are all heartbroken um, by, by the events that unfolded over the past weeks. Yep. Uh, a, huge, a huge shock for sure. But let's just make sure we understand what's going on here. Um, this is a centralized exchange. I'm sure everybody heard that before, but it's important to repeat. 
this is a centralized exchange. I call it the centralized wrapper on top of decentralized technology and decentralized assets. Yep. And centralized exchange um, wrapper has the same risks associated with any centralized entity. So based on decision making of a few individuals, uh, you can you can destroy value and you can destroy substantial value. And this is what we have seen with the F, uh, FTX implosion. If any one of us have um, crypto on the blockchain and you own the custody, so you're not giving out the keys to anyone else, you would have not been impacted by this implosion. Correct. You would be impacted by the price of the assets for sure and, and the quality of the assets you have in your portfolio, but you would not be impacted by the decision of few people that led to the implosion of FTX. So it's very, very Which important. is kind of the main point that this started. Absolutely. The whole idea behind decentralization is removing the intermediary and removing the power of a central decision maker, one or two or few, uh, uh, and, and the, the potential impact if a decision is made wrong or fraud uh, was implemented. So it, the decentralization is meant to de-risk all that. And a lot of people have significant amount of digital assets um, through a MetaMask or a other non-custody based wallet and again they've been impacted by the price of the assets only and, and have not suffered the losses that so many investors and people have suffered as a byproduct of the FTX implosion. So it's important to understand that. It's clear that regulators and the entire government has taken a note and we have seen uh, a lot of activities recently. So and I'm sure this is going to unfold in a pretty significant way over the coming few years. Um, you know, I think a core tenant should be that you cannot use consumer money for other purposes. I mean, it's a fundamental one-on-one in any investment thesis. You can't commingle funds. Uh, that that should not be too difficult to do. To, yeah. to, to imagine. I don't think anybody could have predicted that part. No. But yeah, once a, once a, once a fraud unfolds, you don't even want to know. So, you know, whether you're in a centralized exchange or whatever it is that you are, I mean, if you, have, if, you, if you hire any audit entity before they speak to you, they'll tell you this is the first thing they will tell you. So, you know, if you get audited by anyone, if you're going to do audited finance, this is going to be, you know, one-on-one. But that should be clearly regulated, perhaps, that uh, you know, we cannot commingle, etc. I'm sure the regulators will come up with a, a very thoughtful list of regulations to de-risk situation like this in the future. I hope the regulators come with a balanced view, because the last thing we want is to drive innovation away. But we also want to protect investors and protect the consumer. Uh, so there has to be balance. If anyone thinks in the in the Web three space or a crypto space that our industry is going to scale without regulation, they're dreaming. Dreaming. They're dreaming. Regulation is necessary. We want regulation. We welcome it. It's the only way that we can scale. And perhaps this is this silver lining here is maybe twofold. One, um, you know, people understand the difference between centralization and decentralization. Mm -hmm. Two. Uh, a, a balanced, thoughtful regulation regime comes out of that. Yeah, because we're going to have you know people that don't understand say, well, now my money is not safe at Schwab or Robinhood. And at some level, they're right, because if you remember 2008, uh, it depends how much money you have in these, but there's only so much regulation can do. But we don't even have the beginnings of the beginnings of that, at least in the U.S., Yes, correct. I mean, this is why the United States is the destination for the majority of the world's money is because we have solid regulation. We have um, maximum transparency that you can see in, in the world. Uh, that's why we are you know, enjoying the largest capital markets in the world because of regulation and the transparency. Now, you know, I mean, there is always going to be the Madoffs, unfortunately, because human beings are sometimes genius in, in, in the wrong direction. Uh, but you need regulations. You need regulations to scale. You need regulations to give people confidence that their money is, uh, is safe. Um, it, it has to happen. What's the incentive? This is me as a cynic because I'm still bullish and I'm just saying it out loud. 
what's the incentive for the U.S. to regulate? Uh, because it can just be a giant, you know, if you want protection, deal with stuff that U.S. is regulated, stand in line. Them slow playing this or never getting to this because the system isn't broken in many ways, at least to the to the powers that be in government, the mighty dollar. Well, I mean, look, a lot of the innovation comes from the U.S., and we don't want to push innovators and innovation and business models outside of the country. As we speak, a significant portion of centralized exchange trade occurs outside of the U.S. I think uh, Brian, CEO of Coinbase, said that on one of the interviews, which has really surprised me. Uh, but that's the reality now. So do we want to push this innovation outside of the United States? I don't think so. We need regulations. We need a, um, a fair and balanced playing field. We need the innovators to have the confidence to innovate and create a ton of value for themselves and therefore shareholders. And we don't want to lose that, that market segment or any of the innovation in that market segment uh, outside the country. Yeah. Okay. So we beat that. I agree with you 100%. I'm cynical. But like JP Morgan, what you said, just announced. Yeah. What's the trademark they just did? JP Morgan just trademarked a JP Morgan wallet. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, the centralized trust entity, I mean, JP Morgan is a, is a trusted destination. I mean, nobody, not, none of us doubt JP Morgan. So if you need a, decent, a centralized entity to deal with crypto, you probably are going to go to the Schwab's of the world or the JP Morgan's of the world. Uh, you already have money there, so you might as well just pivot to the next uh, class uh, of assets. Yeah, so the cynic in me hates this, but the actual we should be cheering that they're embracing it. Yeah, I, I, look, I don't, think, I, th I don't think any of the institutional investors and or uh, investors broadly and most certainly crypto and Web3 people have lost faith in crypto. I think... Uh, this is obviously a very significant setback. And again, it's heartbreaking for all of us who were completely shocked by it. Uh, but that, that, that is not a testimony or a verdict on the technology. In fact, if anything, it really, in essence, kind of highlights the thesis. Decentralization is powerful. And if you know how to deal with it, you can protect and de-risk situations like this in a very, very significant way. Yeah. Well put. And so I want to flip, uh, I had this for later, but let's, let's go right to it with the J.P. Morgan thing. I hypothesize, and again, this is the genius, evil genius, or just <laughs> of, of Warren Buffett, you know, in his 40% expression of how he thinks about the future in Tim Cook and Apple saying, eh, you know, deep down he has that bet against calling Bitcoin rat poison um, is really looking good. Meaning, you know, he wins again. He can oil up the mustache and twirl it like uh, Dipsy Doolittle and say, I told you so. He's not like that. But what his expression of Apple could be, and I've said this a few times, is that eh, if crypto matters, Apple is going to solve it or Goldman's going to solve it. And now we need them. Like I've always said that it's going to be easier for me to start a Web3, like something that relies on decentralized wallet with a brand like Apple or Google Wallet. Does that make you cringe or is that the future? <laughs> uh, I think what needs to happen now is the non-custody wallets need to Explain become... that. So non-custody wallets basically, I mean, the, the, the most popular one is a wallet called MetaMask, which is mm -hmm. under consensus. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, in essence, a window to the blockchain. The blockchain language is difficult for you and I and most people to understand. So you need a okay. translator. Okay. So MetaMask is an, is an example of a translator. It translates blockchain language into a language that you and I and most of the world can understand. Like a browser. Like a browser that basically tells you what, you know, how many Bitcoins you have, how many Ethereum you have, how many the different digital assets that you hold. Mm -hmm. by looking at the blockchain and finding your address and basically reading the the value in each one of these different uh, addresses. Right. But it doesn't hold the keys to your tokens, meaning that it, it, they don't... No one can steal them. Uh, no one can move them. No one can lend them. No one can 
do anything to them, you own the keys. You own the keys and you use a wallet like a MetaMask, a non-custodian wallet like an MetaMask, and there are many examples in the market, but as I mentioned, this is the most popular, to see what you have uh, on the blockchain. Now, the, the, the downside of that, the reason that this hasn't scaled dramatically is because you have to remember your keys, and if you forget your keys, you lose your tokens, and there is no mm -hmm. way to recover you. And we are not used to that. As no. uh, can I give them to Knut? Because I don't trust Knut. You, so is that like, that's not fail? <laughs> that's a window into hell. Thank you. <laughs> you can most certainly give them to Knut. I'll take them. Um, I guess you should give them to your divorce attorney if you're married. That, that, would that be is a, probably unadvisable. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the whole, we are not used to this. We are. Um, that's the big leap for me, which is why I trusted, for right or wrong, a third party to just take their two and 20 and then I'm being proved wrong, which is, you know, if you really want to do it, you got to do it yourself. You can't outsource this. I mean, Correct. It, Correct. Okay. So once you trust a centralized entity, like, for example, FTX or others, um, you can... You're fine. You, you Theoretically. Can I mean, you can log in and see your, your crypto, uh, but in reality, they are not in your ownership, and they can do anything and everything they, they need to do to make money on those crypto assets that you have from you. Yep. Uh, and they can lend them, they can, you know. Or just take them. <laughs> that should not be allowed. <laughs> yeah, I agree, that, but they that, can that, do that. That is illegal. That is illegal. So, so MetaMask really is, you know, again, I know it. All the chains have their own wallets, but MetaMask is probably the biggest brand. They are the Internet Explorer of crypto yeah. so far. Yes, correct. So they have, I don't know how many, they have like 30, 40 million, probably more. But that's not enough. We need hundreds of millions. We need hundreds of millions. It's still hard. I mean, even for MetaMask, yeah. it's still hard. People have and to what's remember. Hard? We, well, I mean, it's hard to remember these phrases. It's hard to, the notion of, of if I forget my password, I'm going to lose scary. my crypto is terrifying. Because if you forget your password to your email, you can reset your password and you're fine. But, but say your password is password 12 times. That's pretty easy. I mean, it actually spits out a weird phrase for you that you have to kind of write down, which is really very yeah. archaic. I remember that happening, and that's why I didn't go further. <laughs> yeah, I, I am confident that we are going to find a meaningful way to make this simple and seamless yep. and, and fix this in a way that takes it from, you know, 20, 30 million people to hundreds of millions of people. And it may be Apple. It may be but Apple. But Apple won't do it until... Why is... See, this was the genius of Buffett in Apple. Why be? Why innovate? Wait until someone gets to a hundred million and either buy or copy it. Wait till the market exists. Like Apple's job isn't to create new markets. I know in a perfect world we want them to, but they got to focus on the phone and the watch because they got to pay the bills and keep Warren happy. I mean, look, reality is Apple makes a ton of money on the businesses that they have innovated already. Correct. So there is a barrier to entry for them to take risk on other businesses. I get that. Correct. Um, uh, however, you and I know and can note from history that many giants have been displaced by a new innovator. I mean, the, especially in technology, we have yeah. seen this over and over again, yeah. and even in our lifetimes, right? But if you extend yeah. beyond lifetime. So uh, there is a point at which giants are going to, Apple and the likes, are going to have to participate in a promising technology when it gets to a particular size. And maybe this is what Buffett is betting on. He's like, like you said, Buffett is saying, look, if this is going to be important, I'm sure Tim Cook and the team are going to do something about it. Correct. This is, we're in this in-between zone, it sounds like, where we need infrastructure, which is what you're working on. We need capital. We need AMDs and the, and the other companies to, to at least build for this. Because we need them, like this could shake them. I don't need the aggravation. I'd rather just sell gaming consoles. Uh, <laughs> so, like whoever's building for this, they got to be having their own stressful moment. Is this going to be worth it in the end? Yeah, I mean every every company in the technology space is looking at the crypto space and uh, and the blockchain space to varying degrees. I and mean, AMD has recognized the opportunity here many years ago and wanted to be as close as possible to what's happening in that, uh, in that sector. So if you're a technology company and you're not looking at all at this space, I think you probably would regret it. Even if you're not a technology company and you're not looking at that space, you'll regret it. This is similar to AI a few years ago. Yeah, 
you know, artificial intelligence in 10 years ago. And I mean, AI has been in theory for decades in, in, in all the masters and PhD thesis, but in practice, it, it started to come around 2014, 2015 with IBM Watson. And uh, I mean, now you cannot be a company that, not only a technology company, you can't be a company that is not exposed to AI in some way uh, or some fashion. And now companies are just bastardizing that by just throwing AI on their Twitter feed or their blog or their <laughs> website because they have to. So now we're in that phase where they have to do it. It feels like crypto just got ahead of that mode. Okay, so here we are. We've got to teach people about these windows and how to truly understand that this was about, the original idea was about decentralization. And, you know, in November 2022, most people had fallen prey to centralization. Yeah. So we need the regulation. I think the JP Morgan news, the trademark news is interesting because it's going to wake up other people to do it. And it's the beginning of the beginning for what America probably needs. This is such an interesting idea, the NFTs and the blockchain. Such an interesting, and I don't know how big it is yet, but it's such an interesting idea because I finally get it. You know, I don't necessarily like need to store Bitcoin. Luckily, I'm an American. I don't really need to store anything with the pass key yet, but I want to. <laughs> like, I want to have a change purse or a, a, a true internet wallet that doesn't answer to Coinbase or Sam Bankman Free. Or if it does own to Coinbase, then I'm insured that I can keep enough money in my internet wallet that I'm insured against fraud. Yep. You know, and I want to do this, right, Canute? Like, we want this. I think so, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. kids play video games. P kids put quarters into gumball machines for 50 years knowing that the gumball would come out for the quarter, or they'd smack it and break it and, and yell and complain, but it only got a quarter. So if, if the machine stopped working, you wouldn't put more quarters in it. And I think we're at that phase right now where the file is just so interesting. Yeah, I think, look, I think the whole world needs this. I mean, we, in, in this country, we are lucky because we don't, I mean, uh, you know, we, 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 are, we are seeing inflation, but we don't suffer hyperinflation like you see in other mm -hmm. economies. And um, having, you know, ownership and custody of your money, especially if you could convert it to another currency, for instance, and protect it from uh, degrading profoundly uh, is, is of massive value for the entire world. It, it's not just an investment thesis. I think it, you could see it as potentially survival for, for many uh, outside of the US. So, Sammy, walk me through, because now we've covered what happened and given a good explanation. The good news is there's only 30 million MetaMask, meaning if you go into Web3 today, you know more than 99% of people before you. So you're ahead of still 99% of the population. And you got to see fraud. <laughs> got to learn about decentralization versus centralization. Ethereum's probably going to be under a thousand. Bitcoin's at fifteen thousand as we speak. It was sixty thousand. So you've missed almost nothing. Crypto was a two trillion dollar market cap a year ago and is now eight hundred billion. So it's still tiny, but it's still up thirty times since two thousand thirteen. So if people thought this was going to kill it, it isn't. Doesn't mean Bitcoin doesn't go to a thousand and Ethereum doesn't go to ten. Uh, but the point is, these blockchains, I'm so intrigued by it. I haven't figured out fully where I'm going with this, but, like, this is day one again. Now, I'm old, but if you're 25, what a great chance to start again knowing what the power of this is. So knowing that, what is infrastructure to this? And just walk me through compute and what a machine does and why it's important that we invest in the infrastructure. Absolutely. So the whole idea behind decentralization is removing the intermediary. So what Bitcoin showed us is that you can actually create a significant settlement infrastructure that requires significant compute, actually, and, and transact trillions of dollars uh, for 14 years now without the need for a, a JP Morgan or Schwab in the middle, right? There is no intermediary in the middle. The idea is that this is going to become a, a very interesting characteristic for many other use cases, not just settlement. So, you know, storage, um, uh, 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 social media, all the activities and all the use cases you see in Web2 
every one of them are going to consider a decentralization path because of the uh, because what we have seen from the power of decentralization through Bitcoin, for example, or Ethereum. Yep. All that needs compute. All that needs massive physical infrastructure to run. None of these use cases are going to run on your phone or your watch or your laptop. They need data centers. And physical infrastructure is where Web3 Cloud plays. We are in the business of building those data centers for the decentralized internet. And for all the utility protocols that bring value, we, we build a custom compute and, and custom software for them to scale. That's the business we're in. That business is essential for the um, growth and scaling of uh, the Web3 or decentralized internet. And um, this business has been proven over the past 10, 15 years now with both Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we think this business model is going to explode as we move forward. Yes. I'm super excited. I've been so, you know me, like cringe. You've had to explain this to me 50 times over the last six months because I sat across believing because smarter people than me believe but not fully understanding. I think now that I've had two weeks of hell figuring out where my losses, uh, it was a small percentage of my personal net worth, which was larger, um, I feel like when you dust yourself off here, Ethereum makes complete sense to me. I don't know if it's ERC, you know, 721 or it's some sole, like different type of NFT contract. And Bitcoins, even if we just say it's one use case, I'm running away and I need a stake somewhere. Knowing that MetaMask, even if it's complicated, is at least a window into tracking your internet money pretty damn securely if you if you understand the risk. Um, we definitely took some weird roads to get to these three truths or, or basic things, but what an opportunity to now, with those basic understandings, go to work. But we'll still need the infrastructure. We still need you. Time to build. It is time to build. Yeah, I think, like I said, like, and Jason got that right, but it's it's a very loose statement. It's time to build, but it's also time to have kind of some discipline and to build a, like a business, not just build for the sake of building. But it's like build with some integrity, build with some vision of what um, what people want, and um, you know, build with some kind of business model. And infrastructure has that built in already. Like you've chosen something that theoretically has a business model right from the get-go. I agree with you 100%. All what you said is should be implied. No, you know. You but it hasn't been, right? It hasn't because, been. And that's on both sides. The VCs, the media, uh, the founders that we pray to, um, we're all guilty of it right now at this point. It wasn't just the Zuckerberg movie. It wasn't just SoftBank. It wasn't just Tiger. We're now seeing it at Sequoia. And they can fight. Listen, Sequoia already fired somebody. Everybody's firing the person that uh, put FTX on their desk. Um, that's easy. You know Sequoia's going to do that. You know whoever's in that deal has fired somebody already. Um, I can't fire myself. Um, yeah. Well, other people fire me, and I go, wait a minute, I'm the boss. You can't fire me. <laughs> so all I can do is talk to smart people and clean myself up. But I think this feels like, I don't know, for a year away or six months or tomorrow uh, or five years, it feels like now we're closer to teaching people this is fire. Yeah. Like Bitcoin is fire. Yeah, I mean, but look, I think it's, I mean, this is what you just said kind of triggered a thought in my head. Um, I mean, we, we also probably should look in the mirror a bit and ask ourselves, why are we so uh, infatuated by fairy tales? Hmm. Why do we love magic money machine? None of us, any one of us who built a business before or invested before knows that there is no such thing as a magic money machine. But we love these fairy tales and we seek them and we magnify them and we amplify them as individuals, as media and as investors, as we have seen yep. from the FTX implosion. Yep. So it's a well, moment of reflection, I think. It's a, it's a wonderful moment of reflection. I appreciate you like spinning this up for me because it's been a moment of reflection, but like the basics of this have never been you know, stronger. I mean, we need some help. We need the government to just, and we need Americans to just realize we are 
we've got to take some leadership on this. We have to. We have to take a leading position on this. We can't afford to lose leadership on this segment. It, it would be it would be unfortunate if that's if that's the end result. Okay. Well, I am uh, grateful for your time, my ma'am. Thank you, sir. And uh, pleasure. I know the holidays you mentioned are, are uh, can't help you there. You're fucked. We're all <laughs> fucked. We can't. Panicking. We had it's DNA. We have these people. We can't choose them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it can't be any worse than centralized exchanges. Family. Family is one step above centralized. One hundred percent. Family. I love family. Looking forward to it, but I'm very stressed about it. <laughs> all right, buddy. Have a great uh, holiday season, and I'll speak to you soon. Same to you, my friend. Kenut, take care, guys. Thank you. Hey. Hey, hey. Kenut. It's always good to hear him explain things because Sammy's he's, calm, oh, huh? Yeah, he's good. This is not good for any of us that no. care about the true building, right? Like, right. Like it's boring. The plumbing's boring, but that's what I chose to to do first: is to spend time with Sammy's of the world and understand. I didn't get into the Bitcoin mining, but I totally believe in this compute infrastructure side. Oh yeah, as I'm building a company that will need this, but but more importantly, it took the time to to really sit down with them and go backwards yeah. know, to to look at like what people need to understand. This is a huge opportunity. Now you can get into this is a great chance to put a couple hundred bucks into a MetaMask wallet and start from scratch. You're starting like five years wiped out. Right. So no excuses anymore if this is an opportunity for crypto. And um, I'm a believer. I've learned some valuable lessons again about media and my role in it. And um, just grateful I didn't do more damage to myself um, because it's fire. Like if you don't understand it, it's fire. Like seeing your money evaporate, no different than you're coming home to a flood in your house, just seeing equity just disappear. Uh, is just one. It's been one of the creepiest things to watch, and there were some people warning. So kudos to them, but that's just not enough. Just I told you so's are not going to do it. Uh, it's good for the people that avoided fire, but fire is still burning. And I think this is an opportunity for for really smart people to dig in and understand the basics of this. So anyways, thanks, Sammy. Thanks, Knut, for doing this. You are listening to Panic with Friends. I hate it when there's panic, but I'm sensing opportunity. You uh, can tune in every Thursday. Go to Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever. Search my name, Howard Lindzen. Search Panic with Friends or Newt, N-O-O-O-T-T, <laughs> Newt. And you will, well, Newt, no one will find anything. Uh, you, can, you will subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button and you will hear us once a week. You won't have to do any more work. Have a great week, everybody. Howard Lindzen is the founder and general partner at Social Leverage. All opinions expressed by Howard and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Social Leverage or StockTwits. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for decisions. Guests may maintain positions and securities discussed in this podcast.